Ken Wells is a woodcarver who goes against the grain when it comes to choosing his subjects. His creations seem like they belong on album covers for heavy metal bands. Learn about Ken's need for independence and where he gets his inspiration. It's a passion. It's, it keeps me sane, just like every artist feels that way, that I am more than this. I can go do this, I can grab this log, and, and I can make this out of it. And, and the other thing is, is it challenges me to get more diverse, more far out, if you will, every time I try something. I try to top my last piece. My name is Ken Wells, and I'm a woodcarver of fantasy art. The reason I do what I do with fantasy art, and I call it heavy metal art, if you will, is because I've seen so many the bears and eagles. It's, it's a pattern cut. Even I have been guilty of doing pattern cuts, but I, I would rather every piece be different and no other woodcarver is doing anything like it. And I really want to get a sense of energy, mystery out of it that you just don't get from your standard bear. I want every piece to tell a story. I would say probably 32 years I've been doing it. I started grabbing logs out of my dad's wood pile and I started just playing around with that and gradually bought some more tools and made really bad art. But I loved doing it, so I kept doing it. My day will start and I will have no idea what I'm gonna work on until I drive up here. And sometimes I'll get here and walk around in circles for a while and look at things and look at things. And I am a horrible sketch artist, so I do no drawings. I just try to remember the image I'm trying to get out of the wood, and then I, I go and do it. I'll start carving something randomly, a skull or something, and then I'll work with uh, some flame effects and just see where it goes. Then I'll figure out the, the general shape. I'll, I'll re remove big chunks of wood and then just work it in from there. If I'm trying to get something real serpent-like and flowing, I'll use cedar for that. If I'm going to do, say, a face, you know, where I really want people to see the face, I don't want a lot of color running through it, so I'll go with something like pine, something a little more of a blonde wood. If I'm going to do a raven, I'll look for a dark wood, a black walnut or a Russian olive. I always start at the top, work my way down, then I can adjust as I go. This log, it looks straight, so I'm not, there's not a lot of contours, so I'm not gonna run into any surprises. I'll do a, a motorcycle lunging out of the ground, kind of like a comet. I like to uh, cut hard and heavy at first, and then after a while, I kind of like to slow down and, and make sure I, I don't screw up. <laughs> I like the idea of it being one piece. That way the grain flows you know, all the way through it and it doesn't look like, you know, Elmer's glue, you know, stuck on. One thing I do is I'm constantly circling it. If you stand in one spot too long, you'll lose that perspective. You'll, you'll forget what you're doing on the other side. It's different than sitting in front of an easel. You're just exhausted a lot of times from it. It's so physical. You really feel like it, you got a lot accomplished. It's just an accomplishment. It wasn't a wasted day at all. One is called Hell, and I wanted to do a real surrealistic piece that you could walk around and really never find a blank spot. It's filled with something. I really wanted something intense there. I wanted something that people would really look at and go, wow, this is just a, a, a pillar of agony. And that kind of intensity is what I really try to get. I've had negative feedback at times from people, but I, I 
generally gain strength from that, and I, I feel that separates me and sets me apart from other artists. And I don't think that that all art should be warm and fuzzy. I think some things in art should make you feel and shock you maybe.